Yo, Rana, and welcome to FM Tahiti. I hope you're all doing well. Um, in this episode, we're going to actually start the game off. So we're going to load the database, go through the different bits of the database I've got to work to actually make it work, um, set up our first manager, and then go through and find some actual jobs, uh, hopefully. Um, that's the plan. Uh, anyway, and we'll go through why we've got the manager we've got. So in the thumbnail, there's a bit of a clue. And if you've watched the FM19 Tahiti series, uh, you'll have an idea of who it might be. Uh, but let's set this up for us now. So we've got to go into the advanced setups. So we've got three editor files enabled to actually get this to work properly. Um, three sets of rules, basically, for it all to kind of go together. So if you're new to this Tahiti kind of setup and series, there's the first video you can go back and watch. You can go watch the FM19 series. But basically, it's a kind of semi-fictional uh, save. So Tahiti exists, French Polynesia, Pol uh, Polynesia exists, all these different islands that we've got, they're real. But the teams, the league system, generally speaking, aren't real. So the idea is almost like a mad billionaires come to the islands, financed various different teams at a very minimal kind of level, so enough to get a, a stadium going and that's about it, and then backed off and left it to see whether it'll develop and whether the Tahitian teams will be able to compete continentally and whether the international teams will be able to develop a, sort of above and beyond that. And to kind of get this working, we've got three three main files. So we've got the first one here, which is called the Atoll 20 Convert, which is just the Atoll Championship rules. So this is a set of international rules where the islands that we've got, so Tahiti, Austral Islands, Gambier, Bass Islands, Tumurton, and Marques Islands, uh, all compete every year in an international competition. So this is the actual um, set of rules that lets that, that happen. It's a very minor one, so only 13 changes. It's not a huge um, edit to get that to work. The next one we've got here is what we call Minor France Edit. Um, it says there's no changes because there's no changes to the actual database. So nothing was added, it's just rules were changed. And what this does is it changes the rules for the French leagues and cups to change which teams get selected for the French Cup. So in real life, a team from Tahiti, um, normally I think it's the champions or the winner of the FA Cup for Tahiti, uh, qualifies into the sixth or seventh round of the French Cup. Um, and other teams do as well in the French Cup. So teams from Guadeloupe, for example, um, would qualify. So we've got that, but this time it's two teams that qualify. And rather than it taking from the old competition, like the correct and real Tahitian league system, it's taking it from ours instead. So the top two teams qualify. So that's one of the changes we've made there. And then if we go all the way down here, see there's lots of different versions. The Yorkshire one, that's not quite ready yet. Um, and we've got the uh, version 15 final. We've had to so many different versions of this to actually get the cups to work, the rules to work, to get the finances to work properly, to get the kind of level of players to be about right. It's taken a lot of work. This editor is easily my least favourite editor since about FM 14 because it looks kind of slick. It lets you do plenty of stuff, but the error messages are mind-bendingly obtuse. They don't tell you anything useful. They don't take you to where the error is. When they do pick up on an error, they just give you a very generic message or a message that doesn't make sense. The amount of times I've set up a cup and it said, you said you've got 20 teams, we can only find two. And then when I got into the team view, there are 20 teams in there. Uh, I lost track. That happened a lot. So I had to rebuild a lot of cups from the ground up several times just to get it to work. So there's about 6,096 changes there. So clubs, stadiums, you name it awards, things like that have all been added. So that's what we've got there. And when we set it up, let me do it. Uh, we need to get rid of all these other leagues. So we're going to keep the French national and above, but just make it view only, because this then means the French cup works properly, um, but also saves on processing time. Obviously, we're going to select heat societies because we've activated it. Now we actually get something in Oceana. Uh, In-game editor isn't going to work. We've got add players to playable teams, so our teams actually have a few players. They won't be particularly balanced, but our squads will be able to work from the off. We've made sure we've not ticked the do not add key staff, because that means they will add key staff, so some teams should end up with a few backroom staff, hopefully. And we've got player attribute masking on for this. We'll just change the start date to early season for Tahiti. And there we go. Not a huge database, only about well, just shy of 5,000 
potential players in there, but to be honest, not many players will want to come to us, so it doesn't really matter. It makes it nice and simple for the transfers to begin with. But yeah, hopefully with this, um, we'll be able to make some real progress, make a bit of a dynasty with whichever team we end up with, make a bit more Tahiti history uh, for this. Tahiti have played international competitions like Confederates, Confederates, Confederations Cup. Uh, you may have seen them being beaten by other teams. Um, but before we get to that stage, we need our first manager, and we need our first manager to do well. So we're not going to have Ronnie Hot Dogs. Ronnie Hot Dogs manages Belfast Celtic for us in the other series. Um, we want Yannick Janin. So Yannick Janin um, is based off a player we had in FM19 for the FM19 version of this series. And he was a striker, and I'll show you him. Hopefully he'll pop up on screen. There we go. So just up there. Um, Yannick Janin, Titian player, we picked him up from AS Chance. Um, so we were Ruru, uh, Ruru 2 Humpbacks, say it right. Um, so they're a team in the Austral Islands, famous for the fact you can see humpback whales from the shore nice and easily during the right kind of time of year. Obvious tropical paradise. Uh, but we signed him and he's from AS Chance, the kind of academy team. So AS Chance, I think starting the silver or gold development leagues, they can't sign players over the age of 23. So they've got really good youth intake, but they, the youth intake have to move on. And we snatched him from there and he played a huge amount of games. He ended up the record goal scorer for the Humpbacks, which was nice. And he partnered a few other good players like Semi Gerard and things like that. And he just had a really good, really good run. We played him in the World Cup when we finally got to the World Cup as well. I don't think, I can't remember if he scored or not, but he scored a few for the international side. I'm not sure why he didn't get more caps. Than that to be honest because it was pretty good 29 caps is a bit of a robbery for him look at his attributes this is 30 when he's probably at his peak they're not amazing but he did do well so if i show you this um see here 269 league appearances 170 goals he was easily at 250 if you take into consideration all the cup goals as well so he was a very good player for us you can see ace chance Banging them in, the humpbacks from 2021 onwards. And hopefully we'll find a player like that for us. But when I did my kind of 50 years on to see what happened to the save once I finished in FM19, he took a coaching role and didn't do very well at it, to be honest. It was not a good, good move for him. So you've gone for someone who looks vaguely like him. It's just him a bit grown up. Uh, we've given him is fancy shoes in the color of the Ruru 2 humpbacks because they will forever hold a place in his heart they're his favorite team he's got tahitian as his first nationality because he played for them but he spent long enough on Ruru 2 to get australese as his second nationality and he was born in papite which is the capital of tahiti on the mainland because he came from as chance who are on the mainland we've given him as close to his actual birthday as we could so 20th of the 5th um 1999 and he was the 20th of the 5th 2000 but we can't go any later than that um so we just have to leave that there just double checking i've not left the thing on there yep we'll use that uh, in terms of the teams we're going to manage potentially so we're not going to let him be his favorite team we're actually going to start unemployed and then see who offers us a job there aren't too many rules. I don't mind bouncing around different squads and things like that. I'm not going to insist that I start low down or anything like that. I just want to see how things go. There are a few teams we won't be managing. So we're not going to manage any teams we've managed from FM19. So that means the Ruru 2 Humpbacks and the Totengegi Wings, who we manage in FM19, we're not going to manage. We're also not going to manage, if I find them in the championship, um, Tetaroa. Um, on the Marlon Brando uh, Park, where there's the Marlon Brando Hotel complex and things like that, because Marlon Brando bought the island. Um, we're not going to manage them because they're the team my brother used to manage when we played our network saves back in FM 12 and 13. So they were always our rivals, and basically they're scum. Not going to manage them. In terms of the teams we're looking out for, though, we're going to look out for the rapper ET Feral Cats. Just because I like the badge and the kits, I'm quite fond of them. 
Uh, the Mihisha Island Eruptors, uh, because we used to manage, these are the team we used to manage in the network, save against my brother. Um, it's just a volcanic island close to the mainland. And then beyond that, we're not too bothered, I guess, in the championship. I'd be happy to manage the Heva Oa, Dominica, uh, or the gods as they're known. Um, beyond that, not too bothered. I'm interested in some of the lower league teams that we've got as well, um, like Tiapu and, and things like that. If that is an actual name, I'm not just having a stroke and saying things randomly. National C license is what we're going to go for. Sunday League Footballer, going for the tactician setup, and I've altered it to take a few off tactical, put them onto fitness because a good fitness coach is hard to find and pretty important. And then we've upped level of discipline a little bit. So we took it away from motivating and player knowledge um, just because that will hopefully stop them from rebelling against us. I'm just going to start, save that. So you can see here there's quite a few teams that are just empty in terms of managers. So when we apply the jobs, we're going to get a lot, a lot of offers. And I don't know what to do in terms of whether I should just go for whoever offers us a job first or whether I should just go for the ones I know are definitely interested in. I'll, I'll click this and it'll instantly go to the job offers, I'm sure of it. Yep, there we go. So Pepite, so Pepite Excelsior are based off an actual real teaching team. So the only vague connection to the real league setup that we've let survive. So they're based on the mainland, playing the national stadium in the capital, but we're not going to manage them because they're, they're too real. Taha, also known as Vanillas, on an island where they produce lots of vanilla. A lot of vanilla you'll find in Europe is Tahitian vanilla. We might go there because I quite like the badge, quite like the kit. Um, one of the things I do like about, I don't know if they did it on the last version of FM, but it adds your badges to the generic kits. So even if you've not made your kind of proper kits like the first kit here, it will add the badge, which is a nice touch. Skybrights, Bora Bora, Tropical Island, Paradise, Tupai, Morphia. What I'll probably do is apply to all of these off camera and then come back when there's an offer. I'll, I'll apply to a couple now to go through interviews. So Mahisha have offered us an interview. We'll go through this because we're interested in them. Go for the standard. Whenever they ask this, just trying to forge ahead by any means. We will definitely look after the finances because we have no choice. We won't be able to spend it on anyone because everyone's worth about £500 to begin with. There's not a bustling transfer market to begin with. So we need to make progress on and off the pitch, work within the wage budget, mid-table, quarterfinals, semi-finals, some of the cups. That all seems fine, but next season they want us to qualify for the O-League. So the O-League is the Champions League, and that means finishing in the top two. So basically they want a title challenge, qualify for the O-League, and then the next season they want us to win the Premiership. Okay. Um... I'm just going to say that seems fine. We'll go for a mid-table finish. Proposed transfer budget, about 31 grand. Most teams should have a very similar transfer budget. I'm going to say it's realistic because we can't spend it on anything. At least if we have it, we can put it in wages. And again, wages are 1.8k a week. That should be fine. Nothing else. If you look at the feral cats, any means necessary. Yep, yeah, look at the finances. So they want us to make progress on and off the pitch. Fair enough. I've, I've no idea what that means in real terms. Work within the wage budget, which is pretty standard. Sign players to sell for profit. I can't see us doing that. Sign players that will appreciate in value before selling them for a profit. It's going to be a good few seasons before any selling for real money happens. It took about five seasons, I think, before we started getting sales in the sort of 10 thousand plus range um ten thousand pounds range um in fm19 so it could take a little while before we're doing this but it's just favored 
I get to relegation, be competitive, be competitive, and then continue to remain. Standards are low, I like that. We'll be able to avoid relegation. Again, similar transfer budget, very similar wage budget as well. No requests. So what I'm gonna do then is off camera, I'm gonna go through some interviews. So probably the Nukahiva spearheads on Marquesan side will probably go in for that interview. Moria, one of the bigger islands, uh, the island apparently that's the inspiration for the Moana uh, film Island, if you watched that, good film. Probably won't go for them. Uahin or the Eels, I might avoid them. Moti one I quite like, they're a tiny island. And the reason why I quite like them, other than the kind of French retro stylings that they've got for their badge, um, is the fact that not only is it a tiny island, but in the very original network save that me and my brother played, Moti One always finished bottom. There's no relegation, they just finished bottom year on year. And we will probably do better than that if we manage them. But they're always the kind of the underdogs that's always seemed to happen. Uh, Map T. Nah, don't fancy them. Manue. Nice little kit. I might avoid them. Not a massive fan of Morpia, to be honest. Yeah, Bora Bora will go for as well. Sky Brights. I like the kit. The Taha. So I'll apply for a few of these and I'll come back in just a second. Okay, so I've gone through the interviews that we had. Um, and I'm just going to apply manually for one or two other clubs, maybe. Um, or just at least show you them so you can see them. And then go on holiday and see which offers come in. So when I did the interviews, there was generally everyone was offering the same kind of thing, same sort of money, you know, transfer and wage budget. Apart from one or two, so Moti One offered like four grand for the wage budget. And the Spearheads also offered about 3.5 grand. But Moti One and Spearheads are expecting to fight relegation. And then some of them, like Bora Bora and Taha, were expecting the title within a season or two. So I think Bora Bora wanted us to, no, sorry, Taha wanted to be best of the rest, Bo League, and then the title. Um, so a lot of very optimistic sides. If you look at some of the other ones, so in development gold and silver, there are some four sides. So there's Aish Chance, we're not going to go for them because they're the kind of youth side. They'll be. We'll find it too easy, I think, because the players that'll come through will be really good. The Vines, very small um, team. I might avoid them because it'll take a couple of promotions to get us up. Naruto, I'm going to avoid because the prison penal island. Um, with them because they're another Austral side. So, in terms of Austral island sides, Rora 2 or no one for me. I'm a humpback fan deep down. Go, can't go for the wings. Maybe not the lagunas. Shellfish are interesting. Apply for them. And Ivaroa. Apply for them. I think that'll do us, really. I'll see anyone else I really want to apply for. Maybe Puka Puka in the championship. We'll apply, see what they say. Plus Takaro Terra's just I quite like their badge and their kit. Plus like the Jupiter's badge and kit as well, to be fair. We'll leave it with that. Go on holiday, no more applications. And see who comes back with us. That did not take long. Right then, so Bora Bora applied. So their club vision was to play attacking football, which is nice. Um, so high goals to games and shots to games ratio. They wanted top half, challenge, win, and then continue. Transfer budget at 12, wage budget of 1.8. The Feral Cats, very similar kind of bigger budget, are offering me £50 more. 
Side to sell. Fight against relegation. Stay in. Standards are low. Bora Bora's alright. Let's look at the facilities. They'll be pretty similar. 500 all seater in Bora Bora. Low average training, low average youth. Standard youth recruitment and whatnot. And the feral cats should be pretty much the same. Let's have a look. Average, fairly basic, so a little bit worse. I think it's going to have to be the feral cats. Unless we, can we see anything about the players? We, we can't see anything about them. I'm thinking of maybe replacing the faces with the um, chilled moose or Laura's face packs. I might subscribe to the Patreon for that. I think it's going to be rapper E.T. Feral Cats. It's not going to be Bora Bora. Let's walk away from them. Let's have a look at these. I'm not going to ask for any more money. This all seems fine. There we go. That was nice and quick. No hanging around. It's because there's not many managers, to be honest. There we go. Rapper E.T. Feral Cats. Also known as the Cats, um, have appointed Yannick Jan in as their new club manager. Eyebrows have been raised. I mean, they should be because he's a legend in the alternative timeline. Predicted 14th. I think there are 15 teams. <laughs> so that's um, not great. We're from the Bass Islands. So a Bass, Bassian, Bayesian club. Um, Blue average, no trophies. We do have an assistant manager, which is nice. That should be good. It's probably rubbish. We'll look at the players in a little while. Probably in the next video, because this one's going on. I'm trying to keep the videos below about 20 minutes. I know I'm going over for this anyway, but no, no, I did for the very first one. But after, once we get going, I'm trying to keep them about 20 minutes ish. This is all what we agreed to. Our contract expires. If it doesn't go well, we'll move on. Well, I've never had any of this before. This will all arrive tomorrow. I don't need inducting into any of these things, really. But yes, don't want the friendly. There we go. We'll have a quick look at stuff there. So finances, we've got 80 grand in the bank. If you're a very successful team in the Premiership, you get about 100,000 in prize money. That's across pretty much all competitions and for finishing first and stuff like that. But at the end of the season, you can make about 100,000. That's it. So there's enough money for successful teams to stay afloat. That's about it. But 80 grand is a nice start. We'll, we'll ask for a coaching badge as soon as we can. We've not got any wiggle room in the wage budget. We're already over it, which is interesting. Uh, club info, key player. Is that keeper, I think? No captain set up or anything like that. Estimated value, 101,000. That will change as we get going. Look at the actual... don't want to know about this. That's not many people. It really hasn't filled the squad particularly well, has it? The goalkeeper, a few defenders, a few midfielders. That's not a full... You know, in the 23s? Got a few in the under 23s we can put in. We can put together a squad just about their under 23s, but this will be um, a separate issue. They are kind of struggle, aren't we? Pretty sure we're going to be putting this transfer budget into this wage budget if we can. That's going to be a challenge, especially tactically. But a few things I want to try out. I don't know if we've got the players to do it. Maybe these were a bad choice. If we look at um, Bora Bora, how many players do they have? I have a few more. I have a few more players than we do. He looks good. Definitely pick the worst side. But they are meant to be, you know, relegation fodder. Gives us an interesting challenge to start with. But we shall see. So thanks very much for watching. If you've liked this, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to know more about because we're at the start of this. 
and over the next few days we'll be releasing videos gradually to get us going and then we'll have this and the Belfast videos being released every couple of days hopefully that's the plan and we should hopefully be able to bring some glory to the Rapper ET feral cats thanks very much for watching Thank you.